<clears throat> yeah, good. How you going? Uh, this is going to be a video on how to make a, a jacker through uh, a Suzu Trooper, whatever you call it, where you Monterey, I think they call it. Sleeve removal tool. This is the fella here. This is the prototype. Uh, they're uh, relatively straightforward to make and also essential if you want to remove the injector sleeves on a uh, Suzu 4JX1 diesel, as you'd know, if you've got one. If you've got a problem with the injectors, which most of them have at this stage of their life, simple job to fix if you have a look at my other video on uh, removing the things. And uh, this is a new designer tool. Uh, this is a very, very good tool. I'm going to show you how to make it because I'm not going to make it for you. Okay. Uh, that is a piece of steel that is uh, the same size inside as the injector sleeve in the Suzu head, but I'm not going to keep bringing up Suzu injector sleeves to test the tool. So I've made that and sit some test jig and I use it to test the pull strength of these tools. Now the way this works, to show you what we're going to be making, is uh, there are uh, two bits of steel, two bits of flat mold steel that run down the middle of a tube. That's what we've got. Okay? You we'll see? Two bits of flat mold steel. That's uh, 13 millimeter by 3 millimeter flat mold steel. It's had the edges ground off, you could file them if you haven't got a bench grinder. I've got a nice little iron hole bench grinder, I just made some jigs for it which I'll show you in a minute. And you grind the edges off, fit the steel tanks inside this tube. Now that tube has to be exactly the right size. That is 19 millimeters outside diameter by 2 mil wall thickness. By the way, if you're wondering about the hat, it's my father's hat, he's dead now, passed away about seven years ago. Um, he was a rocket engineer. And that's not a joke. He was. He worked for the government for all his life in weapons. And uh, I wear his hat because I'm hoping that some of his inspiration will rub off on me. Now, the two metal tanks go up the middle and they've got high tensile bolts. Excuse me. Just those fellas, okay? They're quarter inch high tensile bolt. UNF thread, United National Fine Thread, UNF. It just works out better, believe me. UNF quarter inch high tensile bolts. Now they're screwed into the end of those tanks and then they're chopped off, the threads are ground off the inside so there's a three millimeter gap down the middle of the tool and, uh, and then the top's chopped off and you grind it to shape. That's the whole basis to it. So that's simple. You buy that off the shelf at a metal merchant, 19 millimeter, 2 mil wall thickness. Don't get 1.5, won't work. Use 2 mil wall thickness of 19 millimeter outside diameter, and it's usually electro resistance welded tube, ERW tube. Yeah, don't call it a pipe, you won't find it. It's a tube. Now, the outside of the tube has had a, a die run down it, just a die bow on a eBay if you haven't got one, 3 quarter inch. UNF. Don't use any other size. Don't think you've got a metric thread. Won't work. Three quarter inch UNF. Exactly the right size. It leaves enough meat on the body to maintain the strength of the tool and it gives you plenty enough strength and binding in the thread so that it extracts really well. Okay? Now you cut that thread down and uh, that's the hard part. <laughs> and that's 60 millimeters of thread so that's what you do. So that's the actual pull apart. Now, these jaws here are ground around. the ground to a, a radius like this, which I'll show you in a minute, to um, the exact width of 21.5 millimeters across there. They have to be 21.5 millimeters outside the armor. No more, no less. Because if there were more, they'll stick out in the in, in the sleeve, beyond the sleeve perhaps, in some cases, and they may scratch the 
aluminium bore in the head which would wreck the whole head. <laughs> it's a thousand dollars just for an aluminium blank and then there's all the work involved to pull the back again. Um, <clears throat> so you don't want them sticking out more than 21.5 millimeters overall. The end of the tube has to be turned down a little because that tube is 19 millimeters, 19.025 on the average. But it's just a manufactured tube and it varies it's a little. Um, and uh, the inside of the sleeve is 19 millimeters exact. All ones on mission. So. Uh, that would be, an that'd be a, a, a press fit if you put it in there, you don't need to get the blood out again. Also, it's very hard to get in. So you machine, you machine that down now. You can do it in a hand grinder. I did this in a little simple way, I'll show you a bit later. Uh, I just turned that down. That's 185 millimeters in diameter for that last 30 millimeters of the tool. You know? um, then it fits nice and easily into the body of the the sleeve when you put it in there. You want a bit of slop, you know, because you, you don't go in perfectly straight when you're putting it in. You don't want to have to, you know, you just want it to slip in there. But it's important that those dogs must be 21.5. If you have less than 21.5, then they won't engage enough. As it is, there's only 1.5 millimetres of engagement maximum. 1.25 is the average. And that's proven to be more than sufficient because they're high tensile dogs. So the prior tool, previous tools I made, uh, you had to make the body of the tool as well as the tangs out of high tensile spring steel uh, and that's very expensive and it's very hard to work with but this is all mild steel. The only hardened steel is that, those little dogs there. Now in the middle of the tool you use a bit of mild steel flat, okay? And you bend a nice handle on it, nice little 90 degree handle, so you can see that. Uh, you drill a couple of holes in it, we will get into that. <coughs> and that is the locking tank. So you, you put that in there and that just goes up the middle like that. Okay? Show you that again. Hear that nice sound? Click. Now the trick is you've got a standard merchant bar, you know, nine, uh, 13 by 5 flat mold steel. You've ground the edges off, you ground the edges off there, you've got the two bits in there, you, you fit them in there. I'll show you this as we go along then you've got to be able to get a nice fit for the locking tang to go through. Now you don't want it too sloppy, I suppose it could be, but the further the fit you have in here, the less distortion you get when the thing's being pulled really hard. And don't kid yourself, there's a lot of force in this when you start pulling it, you know. This tool was designed so that one dog, if it just catches on one dog, if the holes in the sleeve are drilled out of level, I don't know how accurate we're I usually were on drilling them because they're only for fuel, you know, they're not they're required to be in a precision place. And if you end up in a fuel gallery. Um, if it only pulls on one side, that's 700 kilograms of capacity before it shears off. Which has proven to be more than adequate with the work that I've done and I've done some tools, that, some sleeves that are actually very, very hard to get out. So I'm sure they can be harder, but that's 700 kilograms. If you get a bite on both sides, which is the advantage of having that little bit sloppy because it'll, it'll even out the force and it'll land on both dogs even if it has to go a bit skew, uh, then you've got a maximum pull strength on this tool, a design strength of 1.4 tons pull. Now if your sleeve doesn't come out with that much force, ah, uh, take your head off, but it will, it will. I mean that's a lot of pulling force, it's only you know, 20 mil, 90 mil in diameter. Um, so in operation, the tool is like this. You, you, you've um, the way I've designed it is that the uh, the top of the tool, you just use that top hole and put a locking pin in here. This also stops torsional twisting in the body, and it holds the body of the tool together so it doesn't tear in half there with the forces involved because it's uh, a little bit thin there. Well, that's the obvious point of stress in the tool if you look at it, and I don't want it to rely on that and pull down, it actually pulls through the body like that way, that's a, sort of like an L shape if you look at it, and the transfer of force and it actually gets transferred up to the top here so <coughs> what happens is that this tool body is actually being compressed by the force rather than stretched so obviously that's mammothly stronger than you need. Now to insert the tool you just slip your locking tang into the top of the tool, just a, a nose, 
there, I drew a hole there at the nose and whack that in there. Then when you're inserting it in, you know, imagine that's down on the head of the engine and you, you push this fella down and voila, that's in. See that's clipped in. Okay? Now that's actually very reassuring when you're working down there in the recess of the head between the camshaft. You can't see what's going on. You can actually feel it clipping in. Now when you're working with it you'll be able to do that and you'll feel that it feels locked in. Now the way you know that it's locked in, and this is the advantage, one of the big advantages of a locking tang by the way, is if that pushes all the way down, then they've got to be in the holes of the sleeves. If it doesn't push all the way down, then you know you're not lined up and take the tang out again and just wiggle around a bit more until you, until you got it right. Then you put your locking tang in again, because this aids with the torsional stiffness as you're, as you're uh, pulling the thing out with the force. Now the way that the actual mechanism for pulling it out is obvious. Once you've got it in, you know, you know you're locked in the right place. Just pull your tang out again. Get an outer sleeve which is made from, uh, well that's one inch water pipe, so nominal size. It's just bigger than that and it sits on the alloy head. And uh, it's, the dimension of that's a bit flexible. Uh, you drop your nut on. Which has been cut on nice and ni nicely so that it's smooth front. And uh, um, put your locking tang back in. I put a couple of punch marks in the mark, so because it tends to fit better one way than another, because uh, it's not done in you know any fancy machinery. So because things are made together by hand, you know, um, with uh, Sandpaper and uh, you know, files and all that kind of thing. Um, the fit tends to be better one way around than another, so I just punched a couple of little holes in there so I know I fit the right way around from this tool. It gets better as you use it more, but uh, hopefully you won't have to use it too often. Uh, although these tools do tend to get lent out quite a bit. So you put your locking tang down, okay, and then put your torque bar in. Uh, and then that's in the head, and then you just get a, a big spanner and start to do the nut. And that provides a phenomenal amount of pull. As I say, that actually that three can pull a lot more than, than those dogs can handle, but those dogs can actually handle 1.4 tons of pull that way before they give way. Okay? Now that will pull the sleeve right out of the head quite successfully, you know. Uh, and you use the 60 millimeters of thread there. You could make it longer if you're feeling enthusiastic. The 16 millimeters is enough to pull the sleeve out, and uh, then you pull the sleeve out. You know. Now, when you've got the sleeve out, you'll find that there it is. You think, oh crap! How do I get my, <laughs> my tool back? Uh, how do I get it out of the sleeve? So, um, I, I've thought of all sorts of fancy ways. In fact, you notice I drilled holes in the outer sleeve, and I put threads in them so you can put bolts in there to just screw the two dogs back in. Once uh, you've got the locking tang out. I did show you the spring mechanism, did I? Yeah, okay. I'm going to do that. Locking dog out, take her out of the off now. I just get a bit of 6mm wire and bend it into shape. You can probably do it a little bit better than me. This is a protus, I remember. Okay, now, uh, just put it in there like that. Uh, press the locking dogs in. And now she comes. Okay? And that's it. So, just to recap, you've got your outer sleeve, goes on there. You've got tangs, pins sticking out, nice 3mm gap down the middle. That's the locking tab, tang I call it, okay. And uh, it's made out of 16 by 3 flat, that one. So I left it at 16 all the way down to there, I just I've got a little shoulder in there so that you, it stops there. Now the reason why is because, uh, I'll try and show you this. We'll let the camera adjust uh, and focus. I don't know what it does. You notice here there's a bit of white stuff. Looks like bird crap. Okay. The screeching in here in the background, by the way, is uh, Australian sulphur crested white cockatoos. I've got a flock of a thousand of them been hanging around for three months and they're nesting and they're protected species and they're beautiful, but they make a hell of a row. This is silicon rubber. Uh, got a bit here. 
Right, now you could use Celastic, you know, um, that you use for making engine gaskets, you know, rubber gaskets. But I just use ordinary plumbers, uh, what was it, antifungal acetic cure silicon sealant, okay? Black would be prettier, you know. Um, and that's all it is for roofing work, really. Um, it sticks anything, anything. But the advantage of silicon rubber is that, one, it's very flexible. So it provides the um, spring. I hope you can see this. Okay. See? Provides a nice spring action, nice light spring action in the jaws. And the advantage is this stuff lasts forever. If it doesn't last forever, how easy is it to replace? You just squirt a bit more in there. You, you wipe, if you just fold the tip out, uh, there's a 3 mil gap down the bottom of the tool, but you just fold right there at the tip, at the very tip, you fold it out a millimetre each side, make that a 5 millimetre gap, and that way the bead of silicon rubber has only got to compress in about 40% of, uh, of its thickness, which is mighty fine. Okay, now the silicon sticks really good, but you just clean those phases off with a bit of alcohol, a bit of methylated spirits before you silicon it and you leave it for 24 hours to cure and can you see that? Now this is all that's required to maintain the spring action. Now also at the same time uh, just to give you a little bit of that added security in the whole operation with steel, with steel tools, with anything in steel it's good to hold things in their right place keep them parallel and uh, whatnot. So I put the locking tang in the bottom hole of the, of the tang like that, put the torsion pin in so that this is a 3mm gap and it's running up for about 170mm and there's also a bit of spring in the actual mould steel but you wouldn't want to do much more than that because what happens is the more you bend mould steel obviously it takes that shape you know, and it will be permanently bent in then and that would be a pain in the neck you know, because uh, you won't have these sticking out as far still work but it just makes it harder to work with you know you want that to have a nice clicky clicky thing going on. So when it's out and it's locked in there again, then boom, up she goes. That's it locked. And there's no way, Jose, that those dogs can be pushed in. And that's why you have a locking tank. As you're exerting this huge force to pull the sleeve out, do that the right way around. Um, there's no way that those fellas can be pushed in. And that little 1.5 millimetre wide leaf there, and it holds a real lot. So that's how the tool works. Okay. So now we'll just go a bit on how to um, 